Imagine being one of the most successful female figures of the music industry, but at the same time have almost no presence whatsoever when it comes to social media or her day to day life in any shape or form. Sounds like quite the improbable situation, right? Well, this is exactly what Sade Helen Folasade Adu, also known as Sade, managed to accomplish. With almost four decades of experience within the entertainment industry, one would expect her to release music quite regularly for her to be where she is. But that is not quite the case. Is there a reason as to why she constantly takes long breaks from releasing music? Let's try to find out. Greetings, salutations, and welcome to our channel. Today we're here to cover exactly what really goes on in the life of Sade. As always, before we begin, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to support our channel so we can bring you more quality stories like this. Also, if you don't want to miss a single one of our uploads, press the bell notification button and turn on YouTube notifications on your smartphone. Sade was only 14 years old when she fell in love with soul music, through the culture of nightclubs and dancing. However, this did not persuade her to pursue a career in music. Instead, she moved to London in the age of 17 in order to take part in a three-year course in fashion and design. When she was done with her schoolwork, she put her time and effort into designing and selling clothes through her own men's clothing line. She also had a part-time job where she sold clothes at a nearby market. When a distant friend named Lee Barrett, who took care of a band called Pride, reached out to Sade in order to ask her to become a backup singer, she said yes. The New York Times later reported that Sade found herself in the position of accepting the lead singer position at Pride when the lead singer left of her own accord, even though Sade was reluctant about it at first. However, she, along with fellow Pride bandmates Stuart Matthewman and Paul Denman, started creating music that was centralized around her, which ended up gaining a lot of attention, as her stage presence was admired by many who saw them perform. They later even added a keyboardist and a drummer into the mix as well, as the band eventually rebranded into the name Sade. She once claimed to the New York Times that, I have no technical training and am completely uneducated in music. However, it was quite clear that it didn't matter to the group whatsoever. The band had a unique dynamic where Sade would hum and sing melodies onto a tape recorder and let her bandmate Stuart Matthewman listen in later in order to turn them into fully fledged songs. It was unusual, but the formula worked wonders for them. After all, it allowed them to create four rough demos, along with the popular songs Your Love Is King and Smooth Operator being in the mix as well. However, their producer, Robin Miller, shot all songs down, claiming that they were all too long and too jazzy. However, Sade found support from an unlikely source during that time. She was dating style journalist Robert Elms at the time. He stepped in as he played her songs to some of his friends, who were in charge of a magazine known as The Face. The move was a success, as his friends ended up falling in love with Sade's smooth vocals and her style. It was so good that they decided to put her on the cover of their magazine right on the spot. Deciding that it was time to be in the spotlight, the band organized a performance at a nightclub as they extended invites to all kinds of journalists to the event as well. After a tantalizing performance, the band found themselves in a very busy position, as their phones constantly rang with record companies desperately calling in order to be the first to sign the group. Many of the companies had the agenda of flying Sade over in order to work with established producers in the industry like Quincy Jones. However, Sade had other plans as she declined all of them. Sade instead took a more rebellious route, as she ignored the labels that gave her the most money and instead signed up with Epic Records. She only received a small payment up front of $77,000, but with the benefit of 15% of revenue generated from all album sales, this was a rather risky move, and it would mean that she would have to make it in the industry in order to actually make a profit. But Sade took the risk, with newfound confidence. Of course, with the success that Sade had found, this particular deal would end up going down in the history as one of the most legendary and lucrative deals to ever have gone down through a record company ever. While many other girl bands were the head of their gung-ho empowerment style of music, Sade took a more sentimental approach, as they sang about love and romance. What nobody in the industry saw coming was that it was just what the world needed, and many around the world were touched by it. In 1984, Sade released Diamond Life, as it managed to make the top 10 in Europe. It also managed to reach the accolade of selling more than 10 million copies worldwide. Meanwhile, in the United States, her song Hang On To Your Love managed to hit number 1 in the charts. Not just that, her song Smooth Operator managed to reach number 5 as well. By now, people were more than familiar as to what Sade was all about. Everything about Sade embodied sophistication, style, and class. However, unbeknownst to her fans, during the release of the album, Sade and her boyfriend were essentially squatting in various places in London. 
Sade's boyfriend revealed more regarding this in an interview with The Telegraph, as they had apparently stayed in an abandoned fire station with no heat, and the only toilet was located by the fire escape of the building. 1985 marked the year when Sade released another album named Promise. It took many by surprise, as it sold 9.3 million copies worldwide. This album also ended up winning Sade the Best New Artist Award at the Grammys as well. Sade also had begun branching out into new creative mediums, as she had her acting debut in the 1986 film Absolute Beginners. She went ahead to release her new album Stronger Than Pride in 1988. During this time period, there were rumours floating around that claimed that Sade suffered from paralyzing stage fright. She also ended up commenting to the Washington Post that she ignores all the press surrounding her and the band, because she does not want it to be a factor that affects her and the band's creative process in any way. It is clear that Sade's seclusive lifestyle and lack of willingness when it comes to speaking to the press gave birth to strange rumours, and there being no recorded reason as to why Sade broke up with her longtime boyfriend Robert Elms. She eventually ended up getting entangled with a failing nightclub owner named Spike Denton. However, Sade's newfound wealth ended up being a problem for them, as it drove a wedge between their relationship. Spike later commented, It was a nightmare for men like me when we fall in love with a rich woman and a famous one of that. In 1989, she ended up marrying the Spanish movie director Carlos Pilego. After relocating from London to Madrid, it is reported that their marriage quickly fell apart. Sade ended up releasing her fourth album, Love Deluxe, in 1992. She managed to even score a Grammy for the song No Ordinary Love. Of course, during that time, her marriage was gone for good. She later reported to the press that it was a very bad situation. I had to leave very quickly with a very small bag. From this point onwards, Sade spent most of her time away from the spotlight as she was intent on going on a journey of rediscovery. She made her way back to the UK as she settled for a home in North London. During this time, she even claimed that she was not sure if she would ever put out another studio album ever again. Of course, in a move to keep the fans satisfied, a Greatest Hits album was released in 1994. This year also marked the occasion when Sade started a new relationship with a Jamaican music producer named Bob Morgan. The love that they shared ended up bringing life to the world, as Sade had her first baby girl named Michaela. She fully dedicated herself into her newfound role as a mother, as she even decided to move all the way to Jamaica to understand her husband's heritage better. However, after a legal situation regarding a speeding past a police officer was blown out of proportion, Sade had come to the point where the only way she would not be locked up on the spot was if she would never step foot on the island ever again. However, by 1999, her personal life calmed down significantly. She spoke to Time magazine as she said, When I go in, I like everything in my life to be very peaceful. However, she was still not willing to step into the limelight as she claimed, Beforehand, I was living my little anonymous life. But that whole machine that starts going when you make a record, it was all about how much that change was going to affect my life and my new life as a mother. It took her one whole year in order to finish recording Lovers Rock, which released later on in the year 2000. Due to the smash hit By Your Side, the album was later certified triple platinum. It also ended up earning her another Grammy for Best Pop Vocal Album. February 2002 marked the band's first attempt at the creation of a live album named Lovers Live. After the deed was done, Sade disappeared once more, this time with her marriage broken as she finds love again in Ian Watts, a former Royal Marine. In 2005, Sade and her new family moved into a rundown cottage in rural England. The next time she would make an appearance in the eyes of the public is in the year 2010. She claimed that she had quit smoking and she wanted to show the world what she'd been working on. She released her sixth studio album, Soldier of Love, and it was an instant worldwide hit. The album was so adored that it remained at the top of the Billboard charts for three consecutive weeks. Not an easy feat in any shape or form. Of course, the band ended up snatching another Grammy for Best Group Performance as well. She then went on a world tour, and after its conclusion, slowly backed away from the spotlight. After staying away for eight whole years, Sade returned to the spotlight with the song Flower of the Universe, which even got featured in the film A Wrinkle in Time. She even released The Big Unknown, which got featured in another film named The Willows. In a recent interview in 2020, she revealed that her entire family is social distancing and that she has been spending time writing music and rediscovering her love for cooking. Of course, because of the legendary record deal she has signed all those years ago, unlike other artists in the industry, she does not have to constantly release music to stay afloat. Because of this, she can take all the time in the world to work on her next work of art that will take the world by storm. However, until then, we can only wait and see what comes up next. 
We've now reached the end of today's video. Did you like our story? For more interesting coverage just like this, subscribe to our channel and press that bell button to get an update every single time we upload a new video. Make sure to like this video and share it with your family and friends. Thanks for watching and see you next time.